to morning prayer. Please join me in singing the opening hymn, number 482, Lord of All Hopefulness.
and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with grace. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the readings. Please join me in saying Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, in your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth, for the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God, behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord. For it is good, for you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruins of my troubles. Our first lesson this morning comes from Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in reading Canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has helped, visited, and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, then we shall be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. 
to perform the oath that he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord and prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation upon his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson this morning comes from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show your good life that your good works are done with great gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and self-ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your craving that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. In order to spend what is you, get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in reading Canticle 7, We Praise Thee. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and the powers therein. To, to the cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only son, also the ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon me to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. Then thou hast overcome the sharpness of death. Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore praise thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting.
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three, year, three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, who was the greatest? He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first, must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Life is difficult. This is the opening statement in M. Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled. Originally published in 1978, as of 2003, it has sold more than 7 million copies in the United States and Canada, was translated into 23 languages, and had spent more than 
10 years on the New York Times bestsellers list. That was an amazing thing. In 2003, I received this book along with one Peck edited in 2000, Abounding Grace, an Anthology of Wisdom. Both were graduation gifts. Peck sorted the quotations into 12 different categories. Each of these contribute to the concept of wisdom. Happiness, courage, compassion, purity, perseverance, courtesy, faith, goodness, love, respect, and strength. Subsets were listed under each of them. Wisdom is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Today's readings, as you heard, were about wisdom. In today's New Testament reading, James writes to the 12 tribes of Jews in the dispersion. They are scattered outside of Palestine in areas where pagans live with worldly ways of looking at life. Godliness versus worldliness. He tells them, show by your God that good life that your works are done with, gentleness born of wisdom. If they are envious and full of selfish ambition, wickedness of every kind will sure surround them. James likens them to adulterers as they break the covenant they shared with God. In 2021, our news is full of plots and plans carried out with disastrous results. Families, neighbors, even complete strangers continue to one-up, scheme against, and even to kill to obtain what they feel they are entitled to. Like spoiled children, they fuss until they get what they want. And then it's on to the next thing. Grown persons lash out, shout, and sometimes, which I find <laughs> very hard to believe, even stomp their feet when they can't get their own way. In 2017, Rick and I took a cruise to Bermuda, a beautiful island, clean, never overcrowded, full of happy, friendly Bermudians. Between buses and water taxis, you can get to any portion of the island. We waited one morning for, at the bus pickup point. When it was our turn, we boarded the bus. The driver was an older woman, patiently answering questions. She must have answered and been asked many times each day. Just before we pulled away with the bus, it started. A middle-aged gentleman, and believe me, I use that term loosely, began screaming at the bus driver. I am from New Jersey, so it is very hot here today, so and I can't understand why I have to wait for the next bus. He directed several more unkind comments at the bus driver. I don't know why he did this, if he directed them because she was a woman or if a race card was involved. I looked up. Rick looked at me. He knew I wasn't going to sit there silently. And I said to the man, sir, stop yelling at the bus driver. She is just following the rules 
and doing her job. He sheepishly looked down at his feet and not another peep was heard from him. Now I know I am getting older. However, it seems to me the entitled attitude is more prevalent each day that passes. And it's really not good. In today's gospel, Mark tells of Jesus traveling with his disciples and trying to impart to them for a second time the fact that he will die a violent death and then be raised from the dead. They just don't understand him. And they were afraid to admit it. Instead, as they moved on to Capernaum, they argued amongst themselves, who was the greatest? Trying to one-up each other as they walked along. Jesus said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of, last of all, servant of all. Their puzzlement continued. Jesus then put a little child before them and said, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Now we must remember in Jesus' time, children were worthless. That's the way they were treated. That's the way they were looked at. And he was, by his actions, elevating and reversing all they knew at that time. An innocent child, not yet affected by the world's beliefs, but pure, good, happy, loving, godly. This was a radical reshuffling of mindsets. Last and servant of all, that's what matters to God. Please remember true wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father and the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the He descended to the dead. On the third day, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. 
Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can we live Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passed away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with your weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we have announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Oh, Marsha? We um, served a very nice turkey dinner yesterday. Uh, and thank you for all of you that uh, were there to help in one way or another. We uh, have no turkey left, but we have a lot of other things left. So we're hoping that perhaps some of those things will be purchased this morning. I also wanted to tell you that um, Eileen Jones is possibly coming home this next week. She has a doctor's point appointment tomorrow, and depending upon what the doctor uh, determines, she is hoping she's coming home on Tuesday. Uh, we are setting up a schedule of meals to be brought to her, and because I don't know right now exactly when she is coming home, if you would like to contribute a meal to her, please give me your name, and I will call you once I set up that schedule. Thank you. Does anybody else have any announcements? No? Okay, so let's continue with the offertory hymn. Please join me in singing hymn number 477, All Praise to Thee, For Thou, O King Divine. Thank you.
prayers of the people for Pentecost. Again, on page 10 in your bulletin. Holy God, source of life and fire of love. In this season of Pentecost, when we reflect again on what it means to be a community of faith and preach the gospel through our lives, we ask you to hear our prayer as we open our hearts to you. We pray for those whose lives closely touch our own, that they may always be in our hearts and have joy and happiness in their lives. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially for Bob Man Warren, Victoria Fisk, Allison Forrest, Dan Osmond, Scott Sullivan, and for those celebrating anniversaries that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the 237th annual convention of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, meeting October 22nd to 23rd in Hartford, Connecticut. The spirit of love, you are our prayer. prayer. We pray with thanks for all those in our community who support the well-being of others. We pray for those who have requested our prayers, especially for Allison Forrest and family, Betty Dombrowski, Lydia and Peter Myers, Al Piper, Brian, Catherine and Olivia, Sandra Whalen and Thomas Murray, Nelson Moore, and for those who are listed in the Continuing Your Prayers group at the end of the bulletin. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church, for our, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Ian and Laura, for our priest Ron, and our deacon Donna, and all priests and deacons. We pray for all who proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth, and for all who seek the truth. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all the leaders of the world, that they may make wise choices for everyone, and that they may lead us to honor one another and serve the common good. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for your wonderful creation, the earth, and its streams, trees, mountains, and plants. We pray that the animals of the earth may freely enjoy these resources. Spirit of love, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Spirit of love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who do not understand or have not found your love, that they may seek a deeper knowledge of you. May your love find those who need you the most. Spirit of love, hear our prayer. Please stand. In thanksgiving for the many blessings of our lives, let us pray. Almighty God, God Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all who we have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. 
and you have promised through your well-loved beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now join me in singing the closing hymn, number 390, Praise to the Lord.